Hey, welcome to Wicked Deek, slightly inebriated 2019-20 NHL Pacific Division prediction. Yes, we are one week out from real hockey. Don't give me that preseason crap. Uh, <laughs> and it's time to put your waivers on the table and make your selections. So these are going to be mine. You can post yours below and, of course, tell me how stupid I am. Uh, one. Well, let's just start with something a little more obvious. Pacific's still probably the weakest division in the NHL, although the Atlantic's starting to, well, not the Atlantic, but probably the Metropolitan's starting to make a run uh, for it. Um, but, I mean, come on, if we're honest, there's pretty much three teams here we're all going to predict are going to be in the top three, and that would be Vegas, San Jose, and Calgary. Uh, so for me, I'm going to go with Vegas uh, getting the most points, 100-plus points. Uh Yes, Vegas, the team that's only three years old, and yet somehow is already over the salary cap. Well done, boys. Well done. Uh, <laughs> but you look at that forward group. Ah, sheesh, they're pretty damn strong all the way through, all four lines. Uh, the defensive group, you know, they always look a little weak, but they always get it done. So uh, I'm going to assume that's still going to be the case this year. And then, of course, in goal, you have math, Mark andre Fleury. Um, you know, if there's an Achilles heel for this team, I imagine it's math. Uh, because one day he's going to wake up and realize he's 400 years old. Uh, but he played pretty well last year, and I imagine he's you know, probably going to do so again this year. Uh, so uh, they seem to me to have the fewest holes, so I'll pick him at one. Two, San Jose! Uh, the strange offseason. So San Jose, of course, launched the offseason by <laughs> by giving the brittle one an eight-year contract for, I don't even know what it is, $90 million? It's like 11.5 a year, I think. Uh, wow. What were they thinking? That is an awful contract. I mean, Mr. Brittle, he's barely gotten through the last two seasons. Uh, seriously, that guy might die on the ice in five years. Captain Morgan may have some you know, brilliant offensive skills, but one, he's not a great defender to start with, and two, it doesn't really matter if you know he's only got one leg and has to pull himself around on the ice with a stick. Uh, so the Carlson deal, boy, I think that's going to really, really hurt San Jose in a few years. But this year, you know, he'll probably have a good year. He seems like he's healthy, he had surgery again. And uh, if you have him and Burns coming out of the back, that's a lot of offense coming out of uh, the defensive zone, something that really no other team, in, uh, certainly in the Pacific, can match. So you have to be impressed by that. Uh, two potential Achilles heels, goaltending. Martin Jones sucked the pipe last year. But I imagine Martin knows that, and I would suspect that he's a bit embarrassed and he's going to come back and play better. Uh, this year, if he just returns to you know his average level of play from previous seasons, that's going to be a big boon to the uh, Sharks. Uh, now, the other Achilles heel, which I think is probably more problematic, is Mr. Pavelski is gone. He, the hated tipper of pucks in front of the net for goals. Uh, you know, I mean, you can count on him for 30 goals a year pretty much consistently. And, uh, you know, to do well in the faceoff circle and play, you know, a solid center position, that's not easy to replace. And uh, the Kings have some, or the Kings, the Sharks have some interesting uh, forwards and prospects and what have you, but oof, that's a lot of you know production to replace. And I have some doubts, to be honest, uh, but I still think they have enough offense coming out of the back and that Jones will be better. And so that'll be enough to at least offset them and get them into the playoffs. Wouldn't be surprised to see them perhaps try to trade for a center upgrade at some point. Uh, but for the start of the season, we'll say, yeah, number two. And then Calgary, the mystery flames. Very solid forward set, very solid defensive set. And then you look in goal, and you go, Mike Smith, wow, really? Jesus, you guys got to upgrade. Uh, and apparently they agreed. But then they signed Cam Talbot. Not exactly an upgrade. <laughs> I have no idea why they picked him. Did you know that in Swedish, Cam Talbot means <laughs> very wide five hole? Um, <laughs> Cam Talbot sucks. I have no idea. Yeah, to understand how poorly Cam Talbot was viewed in the NHL, last year the Flyers traded for Cam Talbot, and they gave up, I don't even know what it was, I think uh, Anthony Stolarz and like a half-eaten cookie. Uh, and they traded for Talbot with the purpose of making him the backup this year for the young goalie Hart. Uh, and Cam Talbot was excited about that. Because if you read through the lines, you thought he might have been a, out of the NHL. But apparently the Flames saw something that nobody else saw. <laughs> so they have Cam Talbot. Oh, dear. Uh, and then to double down on the odd moves, they brought in he who must not be named in Edmonton. Yes, the Italian stallion, Milan Lucic. Oh, wow. 
I, I don't understand that trade either. <laughs> I get it. They were getting rid of their own little free agent disaster, but uh, I, wow. Does anybody understand that? Is, is the goal just to have Luke Chief skate around and punch people? Uh, I liked Milan when he was with the Kings and the Bruins, but the game is really blown by him and he can't keep up and it's just a disaster. I, who knows? Maybe he rebounds, but wow. I, hard to see how that's going to play out. So uh, if they have Achilles heel, certainly goaltending is going to be it. And, uh, you know, having to be on the penalty kill all game long after Milan punches various people, that would apparently be it. So what about the rest of the Pacific? Uh you know, Edmonton, Arizona, Vancouver, you can kind of mix together, in my opinion. I'm going to pick Edmonton fourth. I hate the Oilers, but I do respect Dave Tippett. Uh, and the one thing about Tippett that we know he can do is that man can set up a defensive structure. You remember those Coyotes teams he had where, you know, the ownership was either, you know, so bad that they had a payroll of like $12. Uh, or at one point, I think the NHL actually owned the team. <laughs> And yet he would keep them competitive, even though you looked at the roster and it was like, who? Um, and he would do it by playing defense. If he can get Edmonton to play that kind of defensive structure, all they have to do is be average because they have McJesus and Zajaman both scoring, you know, 100-point pace. Uh, and then you have Ryan, Nugent, Hopkins, Led, Zeppelin, Smith uh, as the uh, second or third center, depending on how they line them up. Uh, some people are fans of him. I'm really not. Uh, yes, he does score quite a few goals. But if you actually ever watch Mr. Nugent Hopkins, Led Zeppelin, play, uh, most of those goals don't really matter much. The game will be, oh, I don't know, 5-1 with the Oilers, either winning or losing. And then he'll score the next goal. <laughs> and it's like, yay. He's kind of the empty net goal center of the NHL. Um, but nonetheless, if they can get some defense going, and, uh, you know, I think that's probably going to be pretty good. Do they have an Achilles heel? Yeah. I mean, if McJesus is hurt, pff, you can start circling, uh, you know, hitting the toilet <laughs> toilet uh, flusher and watching the water circle. Uh, and then their goaltending is also not great. Uh, but tip it. I respect him. I'll give him a lot of credit here. Uh, Arizona? How far can a hot dog take them? Uh, one of the best defensive teams in the league last year, even with all the injuries they had. And now they bring in Phil, the hot dog. Um, you know, say what you will about Phil. Is he in shape? God, no. Uh, does he look like a hockey player? <laughs> uh, but can he score 25 to 30 goals a year? Like a clock. He does it every year. And so you have to think that's going to help Arizona a lot because the thing gets some decent scoring with that defensive effort. Holy moly. Uh, they could certainly make a jump up, but you know, I tend to have some doubts. So I'm fifth, sixth, Vancouver, uh, with the odd, strange GM who likes to go out and sign veteran players for way too much money, but has also drafted well and brought up some uh, good young players. I mean, they're going to have Quinn for a full year this year, or at least until somebody, some big forward, you know, separates his head from his body with a check. Um, you know, and they have the young kids that are starting to show. So you have to like Vancouver. I just, they just look kind of chaotic to me. I don't, I don't really see them you know, making a huge move, but they're definitely coming Give it another year or two. Uh, and I think that they could start, you know, re-entering the picture to be in the top three. But if there was a surprise team that was coming out of the West, I think Vancouver would be it. Uh, seven, La Kings. Yes, my Kings, full King fan here. Uh, and Kings fans are very myopic at this point. Of course, all hockey fans are. It's a week before the season, and nobody can, you know, of course, see any of the problems on the team. All anybody sees are the best parts, and that's true for Kings fans. Uh, and the biggest benefit we're seeing in LA is we appear to have a real coach, and Todd McClellan, the man can talk. Uh, <laughs> and he is, I mean, he's impressive. I have nothing negative to say about him, and uh, particularly when you consider the fact that he's what, been an NHL coach for 10 years or so now. And, I mean, all those Stanley Cups he has in his cabin, he really knows what he's doing. Oh, right, he doesn't have any. Um, now, that isn't to say that he isn't going to be a huge improvement for the Kings. He is. But I have yet to see a coach get onto the ice, skate through the other team's defense, and, you know, deke out the goalie and score the winning goal. <laughs> McClellan can only do what he can do based on the roster. And if you look at the Kings roster, it's basically the same team that had 71 points last year. And if anything, this team is weaker at the beginning of the year than it was last year, because last year they had Muzzin at the start of the season. 
And of course, he's gone. Uh, no, I think the Kings are going to be better. I do. I think 85 points around there, probably going to be better uh, to that extent. A lot of that down to having structure and a real coach and some of the veterans hopefully being embarrassed after this last year and playing better. Uh, but, you know, the Kings making the playoffs and that kind of thing. Nah tend to doubt it. And honestly, it's probably not in their best interest. They really want to draft high again, get some other good players. Uh, they have, you know, a very high ranked farm system, number two in the league. And so, you know, there's a hope that they'll, they'll have a flush of talent coming in in a couple of years that could really make a difference. Now, of course, all of this is offset by the fact that if Velarde actually plays this year, then of course they go undefeated and win the cup. Uh, eighth, Smoke Ducks, the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, the Ducks are a fascinating team. They're actually the probably the worst team in the NHL last year. Uh, now, they didn't finish that way from a points perspective, but if you actually looked at all their team stats, they were awful, absolutely awful. So how did they avoid the seller? Uh, goaltending. Gibson and Miller, they played out of their mind. Um, but hard to see them continuing to do that. Gibson, I guess, I get it. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, but for him to be the best goalie in the game... My personal opinion is you have to play more than 60 games in a year. And he has never done that in his career. Not once. Captain Brittle. Eric Carlson thinks that he's injury prone. Um, but Ryan Miller, you know, he can still uh, get carted out into the front of the goal and, uh, you know, stand there and block enough shots to be a solid backup. Uh, so you have to think that's the strength of the Ducks. You look at the defense. A lot of people think that defense is strong. Man, I just don't really see it. But, uh, you know, yeah. but they're forwards. Oof. They've fallen off in the forward area uh, pretty badly. Uh, center is going to be a real issue for them. Getzlaff is still going to be serviceable, of course, probably more than serviceable. Henrique, though, uh, you know, he's a third-line center. He always looks like he could be more, but whenever he's played above that level, he's always kind of been, eh. and then you look at the rest of their centers and Sam Steele, yeah, I know, I hear him talked up too, but have you ever actually watched Sam Steele play hockey for an extended period of time? Eh, not bad. Not great. Uh, you know, they do have some kids coming up and of course you have to see how they do. They have Raquel, who I think is, you know, a, a real fine in the NHL doesn't get enough exposure, but he didn't play great last year. So who knows how he plays this year with the team, uh, probably sucking. Uh, but just shows you how the cap system works in the NHL. You know, years ago, the Kings and the Ducks and Vancouver were all the top three teams in this league. And now they're at the bottom, <laughs> not the only team that's really managed to keep you know, steady, steady general position is San Jose, but boy, that Carlson contract is just ugly. Uh, so there it is. Wiki Deek, slightly inebriated, 2019-20 NHL Pacific division prediction. Uh, out of those finishes, I'll say Vegas, San Jose and Calgary uh, qualify for the playoffs. I think that the central is going to send five teams because the central looks like a knife fight waiting to happen. And I'll post a video on that soon. So anyways, let me know what you think below. Tell me how stupid I am. I'm blind. The Kings are going to win the cup, go 82 and 0, and sweep in the playoffs, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, Deke out.